In this video we're going to be looking at adding cost and resources to our project. If I open the project view by coming to the bottom of my screen, clicking the project view button, I can see my consumable, permanence, resources and cost centres. I can look into these in more detail by clicking on the plus sign and I can see the resources that have been set up and are available in my project along with a series of project costs that I can track. But before I go into that in much more detail, I'd like to show you an associated feature called Task Work. Now it may be that you don't need to record the number of people being used in your project, but you do need to record the amount of work that needs to be completed and the rate at which it is completed and how much that will cost. And if so, task work could be for you. I'm going to show this by using a predefined table. So I'll bring up a table here under the tasks category. There's a table called task work. And this table allows me to record an amount of work against a task and a work rate and have that calculate the duration of the task for me. And there's no need to allocate resources to do this. So for example, my first task, if, if I put that there's a thousand units of work to do there, It's defaulted to meters squared, but I'll change that to units. And we can complete a hundred per day. Now that has calculated a 10 day task for me. The duration of my task changed slightly to what it was to begin with. If I change the amount of task work on the task to 2000, my task duration has been recalculated to a four week task. If I press the reschedule button, that will impact the other dates in my project. When it comes to progress in the project, we'll be able to enter in how much task work has actually been done. So it's a nice definable measure of progress, which may be preferred to a percentage measure. So we can record the actual task work done against what was planned to be done. So that's task work and that's one way of being able to change and affect the duration of our tasks but without resources being assigned. The next thing we're going to look at is assigning resources to our tasks. So if I change the table back here to the default table and display the project view again and we can see that we have our site resources available to use here. If I was to assign a bricklayer to the walls task, for example, I can drag and drop to assign one bricklayer to the walls. And you see straight away that the resource allocation bar is displayed beneath the task and we have this line of italic information, which is the resource information. Now I can repeat that to assign bricklayers to the other tasks in my project. So let me select the walls task there and maybe foundations here and I can drag and drop to do a multiple allocation to all of those activities. It's not clear at the moment how many bricklayers have been assigned so I'm going to need to add a column to my table for that so I will come to the allocations field and I will choose allocation and that's put in a column for allocation there in the background. Table definition properties I can now close and you see that by default one resource was assigned in each of these cases. I can now change that. I'll say I want three bricklayers working there. I'll put three there and just two there. So I can edit the number of men working against each activity. Let me allocate um, a carpenter onto this task. So let's put carpenter there on the windows. And um, it's possible to have more than one resource working on a task. So if I put a carpenter there on a roof and also a roofer, and so it is possible to have predefined quantities of men. So when you allocate, that's automatically told me that's three carpenters working. And uh, it's possible to have more than one resource against a task, as in the case here with this task. Once our resources are allocated, 
I'm able to select to view a histogram. This is on the View tab in the Graph section. And a histogram will show up at the bottom of my screen. I can select the resource that I want to report in the histogram. So I'll choose Bricklayers. And I can choose from a predefined list of histograms that are available on the construction template. And so what I see here is my allocation of bricklayers across the project. Now I'd already defined that I ha only had three bricklayers available. So I can see I've got an issue here at this position and I've got an over allocation of bricklayers. Now there's many different things you might choose to do about that. Um, in our training courses we'll go through various methods of dealing with the over allocation by changing the modeling of your resources. But one quick way of having the software deal with it, we might um, come to the allocation tab and choose to level resources. And there's various different options here, but just to choose to level the brick layers. If I click level now, that has moved my activity, consuming the float, and by doing these activities at different dates, I've leveled out the over allocation and I've been able to do that without affecting my end date because it's used up my float period. Let's now look at costs in the project. So I'll change my table back to the default table. And to enable me to allocate the costs, I will instead add a column for cost into my table here. The table definition box appears. This time I will choose to set zero as blank. I'll click close and there I have a cost column ready to use. On the format tab, if I select the bar chart, I will choose to hide the display of the resources and instead display cost allocations. If I navigate to my cost centers in the project view and if I assign a labor cost now to the ground slab task, you can see that that's got a cost of a thousand pounds there. and. Similar to what I did with the resource allocation, I can now choose to edit that to the specific amount as required. I can allocate labor to other tasks in my project. And edit those figures accordingly to the quantities required. To display a histogram, back to the View tab, New Histogram, and this time I will select my cost centers, specifically my labor costs, and I will choose to histogram total cost. And that gives me the cash flow forecast monthly through my project.